correct kind of air for us to breathe as humans okay which we can't find currently on any other planet it's the moon right so this is what we are familiar with again of course with our earth and the moon okay and recently i think it was yesterday okay we just had the super moon super moon is when it's a full moon and it happens that this full moon is nearer a little bit nearer to the earth so it appears a little bit bigger to us all right so the sun the sun so easier to see right and yeah that's the night part of the earth okay so you can see that there's a lot of lights everywhere right okay so that will be our earth but let's maybe take a journey to the other planets in our solar system okay we're going to start with the one that is nearest to our sun and that would be mercury mercury yeah that's right mercury okay so we're gonna head to mercury you can see the moon over there in the background okay but let's head to mercury in three two one let's go this would be how it's like in the space. That, that, that okay. So, this is Mercury. Alright, and for all of us, when we look at Mercury, you realize that it looks quite familiar, right? It looks like coconut. Like? It looks a little bit like our moon, that's right. Okay? So, this planet, okay, the reason why it looks like our moon, okay, other than color and all that, okay, is because it doesn't have an atmosphere around it, all right? Unlike the Earth, yes, correct, that's our sun going over there, okay, because, you know, the planet is actually orbiting or making a path around the sun, right? Okay, so this planet doesn't have an atmosphere, okay, so what happens is that all those asteroids in space or rocks in space, when they are moving towards the planet, okay, they will hit directly onto the surface of the planet and form a little thing called a crater over there. When I say little, actually it's not very little. Some of these craters are really, really huge, okay, bigger than the city that we have on Earth, all right? Whereas for Earth, we don't have such craters because we have an atmosphere, all right? And what happens is that those smaller asteroids, okay, when they enter the Earth's atmosphere, they actually burn up in there by the time they reach the surface of the earth they're either very small okay small enough to not make a big difference to us or they are just gone they have just been burnt off all right this is similar for the moon okay in terms that it does not have the atmosphere as a protection all right now for the earth the atmosphere also helps to keep us warm because it traps some of the sun's heat in the atmosphere so that living things can survive if not it will be so freezing cold that we won't be able to live right okay however for mercury it doesn't have an atmosphere okay so in the let's say right now on this part where it's night time it would be very very cold more than minus two three hundred degrees celsius all right even though it is very near to the sun the part that is night time would be extremely cold because there is no atmosphere to retain the heat of the sun okay on the other hand the part that has the sunlight which is daytime over there okay would be extremely hot because mercury is very very close to the sun to the sun right okay so it'll be more than three four hundred degrees celsius on the surface of mercury all right so is it a good place to live on no, no. it's a no, horrible place because temperatures are on. very extreme over there either extremely hot or extremely cold plus there's no air to breathe plus there's no water over there so essentially for humans not a very good place to stay on okay so that's for mercury all right now moving on to the next planet and that would be venus. venus okay so in three two one venus bright planet when we view it from the earth it's a very bright dot all right because its surface is very light yellow in color so it reflects a lot of the sunlight okay and hence it appears as one of the brightest objects in our night sky all right now these are clouds okay over there okay so it does have venus does have an atmosphere hence you don't see like a crater surface over there 
okay but this atmosphere is very different from the one that we have for earth okay because this atmosphere is filled with sulfuric acid which means it's also not suitable for us to live on because it's very corrosive okay you try to breathe that gas in your lungs will be melted off okay and in the first place your skin will not be able to take it either yeah. right so it's not very good to live plus it has this atmosphere right which would mean that it does trap heat from the sun okay and it's pretty near to the sun so for venus unlike mercury it's just hot all the time okay because the night side over here still has the atmosphere so the heat will still be trapped there all right so it's just more than 300 degrees celsius all the time on venus okay so not very good place to live for us either okay and that is why so far no life has been found on these two planets all right okay so those are the two planets that are before us nearer to the sun okay now we're going to move a little bit further Okay, Earth, we saw that just now, so we're going to head to the next wow. one, which is Mars. Ah. Alright, so in 3, 2, 1. We okay, this point, just adjust Mars a little bit. What's that part? Okay, so Mars, also known as the red planet, okay, red because of this thing called iron oxide that is found on the surface, alright, and what is this thing called iron oxide? It's actually rust, okay, you know the rust that we have on metal objects that are left outside, not taken care of well, okay, for a while, okay, and how does this rust form? It forms when there is oxygen and water in the atmosphere right okay which you know on on us our planet earth okay we do get our metals rusting quite easily right okay so for mars how come it's filled with rust what does that mean to us yeah i probably had some water and something else yeah oxygen and these two things are the things that are important to us right okay Unfortunately, by the time scientists discovered Mars, it has no um, liquid water on its surface. There are um, there is water in the form of ice, okay, and the air does not contain any more oxygen, okay. But there could have been a period of time that Mars would have been suitable for some life to be over there, right? Okay, so that's about the red redness of Mars. Okay, other than that, okay, there are actually two nice features to look at on Mars surface all right and right now what I'm going to try and do is to find these two features okay one of it is a very tall volcano and yep correct it is taller than the tallest mountain that we have on earth Sorry, I'm just spinning Mars in all kinds of directions now. <laughs> 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 Alright, let's see here. taller than Mount Everest that we have on Earth. Okay, there are some people who think that if you try to throw a rock off the top of Mount Olympus, it will just never return to the surface of Mars. Okay, because it, it will get out of the place where the gravity can actually bring it back to the surface. Right? Another feature over here, the scar that you see, okay, that is a very, very deep valley or trench. Okay, deeper much deeper than the Grand Canyon that we have on Earth, right? At least three to four times deeper and times wider as well. 
Okay, so these are two very big prominent features on the surface of Mars, right? Okay, so those are the four planets that we have seen so far, okay, in the inner solar system, right? Now we're going to move to the other four planets in our solar system, okay, we call them gas giants, right? Okay, so the next one would be... Jupiter! Yep, Jupiter! So three, two, one, Jupiter! Bye-bye! Bye-bye, Mars! Hello, Jupiter! Where is red dot? I don't see a red dot! <coughs> Is that a red dot? Oh, that's a red dot. I think it's red. Alright. It's a lot bigger. Okay, so usually a lot of people like Jupiter because of the beautiful patterns that it has over here. Can we right? see the red dot? Okay, so those are storm clouds on the surface of the planet all right and these are storms that have been raging on for thousands and thousands of years in uh, especially one very big storm system okay which we are currently looking for called the great red spot all right okay so when the scientists first observed the red spot many years back okay compared to now the red spot has shrunk a little bit in size so there are some scientists that think that this very red spot will disappear after some time, all right? Okay, but you know, nothing is absolute. We have only been observing this planet for just the amount of time that we have been using our telescopes, all right? So oh, who knows yeah, the red the dot. this uh, star will get bigger again, all the right? Red dot so this is a very nice planet to see using telescope as well in Singapore. Okay, so at certain times of the year, we are able to spot this, right? So this would be Jupiter, okay? Right, so for Jupiter, there are actually a lot of moons orbiting this planet, okay? Current counts for the number of moons would be around more than 80 moons, okay? Out of which there are some that are very close to the planet and could possibly be seen in our telescopes when we are looking at the planets okay so let me just turn on the orbits for these four moons right and i'm going to move us outwards a little bit okay so that you can see them right currently i think you can see three of them on the right side okay so you have europa ganymede callisto and there is one more called io no, I am. <laughs> okay, so these are their orbits. Okay, so usually when we are looking through our telescopes, how would Jupiter look like? Um, a little bit smaller than this. Let me just try and put it into perspective for you. Kind of like this, alright, through a telescope, okay, where you can still make out the bands. All right of uh, Jupiter okay and if you were lucky enough you could see the moons all right as bright little dots near it okay sometimes you see all four if you're lucky enough right and sometimes you might see maybe just two or three maybe because one of the moons is actually behind the planets or just happens to be outside of the telescope view all right so these are four nearest and biggest moons of Jupiter just bring us closer in again so that you can see them a little bit better all right okay so jupiter does have a lot of moons but if i were to turn on all the moons right now in this system we're going to have to look at them for a few minutes because the system will start to hang a little bit <laughs> all right so we're going to do that okay but it does have a lot of moons okay but if you want to compare moons saturn has even more moons all right so far the current count the last i heard is that saturn has more than a hundred moons orbiting the planet okay in comparison right okay. Off. okay we're going to head over to next planet saturn okay in three two one also a very top favorite oh my god all right so the one that has rings around it very beautiful planet Okay, currently going to nighttime. 
Alright, and these rings that we are talking about, what are they made of? Dust. Dust. And dust, yes, what else? Ice. Pieces of ice, dust, some rocks over there, right? Okay, so these are what make up the rings. Okay, in case you're wondering, how do we know? Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is we are going to fly into the rings to see what is it and actually put the rings. Right, just a little bit. Okay, so it's rock crazy each other. It is as well. Oh no, it is closer and closer to the rings. It is cool. Okay, we are currently in the rings. So you can see all those things flying past us, right? Okay, all those are the dust, rocks, ice that make up the rings. Okay, and I'm going to move us a little bit closer to something that is in the rings. Okay, if you notice, if we are flying closer to something over here, okay, what do you think this is? A UFO. <laughs> Onion. A UFO. <laughs> oh, no. A moon. An onion? Oh, that's new. That's a new one. Okay, I like that. That's kind of look like an onion. Actually, it looks more like a garlic. <laughs> that you have not peeled. A mushroom. Rather than an onion. Yeah, the other top favorite answer that I get is potato. So space potato, space onion, space garlic, space UFO. Oh, what actually is this? A moon? Yes, it is a moon. Alright, yeah, gentlemen, got the right answer. Okay, this is one of the oh, moons the of Saturn. Its <laughs> name is Pan. P A N, as in Peter Pan's pen. Yeah. Alright, okay. So, in case you are wondering, what? This is a moon? I thought moons are round, okay? Nobody said that moon's gotta be round, right? Okay, now the definition of a moon is that it is something that is orbiting a planet. Okay, and it must be able to clear a path for itself. So if you notice over here, there's this empty space, right? Okay, and this is the path that Pan is making around Saturn. Okay, because it's able, it's big enough to clear a space for itself as it is moving around the planets. Alright, so if you notice, as I zoom out away from Pan and out of the rings, you notice that for Saturn's rings, it does have a black band. Where is my Saturn? <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay, it does have this like kind of like empty space in the rings, right? Okay, over here and over here. This is where the thinner one is where Pan is. Okay, and that's the path that Pan has created for itself in the Saturn's rings. Alright, okay, so in case you're wondering, actually there is a moon over there that looks like a potato. Alright, okay, so that is for Saturn. Okay, alright, so now we're gonna move on to the last two planets in our solar system, and we're gonna fly out to the greater universe. Okay, so Uranus in 3, 2, 1, let's go. <laughs> alright, that's Uranus over there. Okay, so interesting thing about Uranus, okay, is that it is orbiting, or rather it's not orbiting, it's spinning in a different direction compared to all the other planets, and in case you don't see, there's actually kind of like some rings over here, okay, but uh, they are much fainter than the ones that Saturn has, okay, so if you notice, it's actually tilted in a different way, Right from the, all the other planets, and it spins on a different axis as compared to the other planets in our solar system. Okay, because the story goes that uh, back many many years ago, okay, Uranus was actually spinning in the same orientation as the, all the other planets. Right, but one day an asteroid hit it, and it fell over. Okay, and nobody helped to pick it back up again, like Humpty Dumpty. So it never got back up. So it's forever spinning in this other orientation that's different from everyone else. Okay, so that's Uranus and makes planet Neptune. Okay, in three, two, one. Bye bye. Neptune. Quite a similar color to Uranus, but much darker blue. 
okay with all the beautiful kind of blue all right and this blue color is you know uranus is also blue this blue color is because of a gas that exists in the atmosphere for these two planets and that gas is called methane all right we do have methane on earth okay our cows produce it our sheep produce it we all produce it when you eat and then you form gas in your tummy and you burp and you go for gas <laughs> all right you are releasing some methane gas okay and these two planets are filled with that gas okay so i don't think it's a very nice place to be because you know how farts smell like how worms smell like i don't want to land on this planet because it's going to smell a little bit funny over there right okay so that's for the planets and our solar system okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to make our way back to earth Okay, and from there we're going to slowly move out into our galaxy and to the universe. Okay, so let me make our way back to Earth. that are orbiting our earth okay and by satellites i mean the ones that humans have shot out into space and what do these satellites give us yes that's right internet to watch netflix okay our uh, reception for our mobile phones basically anything that requires these satellites television radio stuff like that okay you will see them all over here right and those yellow lines are the orbits of the satellites that are making their way around earth and making things possible for us okay so we're gonna slowly move away from the earth right so you're gonna see the moon and the inner solar system planets okay so these planets are all quite far from us right and we are traveling really quickly even faster than our current spaceships can handle okay so that's our solar system over there okay and you are to yeah. one i won't call your planet anymore because it's been destroyed it's planet is Pluto okay his orbit is very different I love Pluto. from the rest of the planets okay and Pluto does not it's not able to clear a path for itself okay and hence a couple of years back actually got disowned as a planet planet okay, and it's now called a dwarf planet okay and in case you're wondering what are these lines that are going out let me make our way out a little bit more okay these four lines are from four kind of like spacecraft that humans have sent out okay uh, voyager 1 and 2 oh, pioneer 10 and 11 yeah. okay they are going out to find out more about our universe around us okay sending information back to planet earth right so that we know what is out there okay and on these four spacecraft there is also this thing called a golden disc all right which carries information on how to find planet earth okay so it's kind of like a little map for any other intelligent out life out there they find this golden disc on the spacecraft and they manage to solve some puzzle on it okay they can actually get back to reach earth in case you're wondering why i'm not sure either <laughs> to me it's a very scary thought because you know we watch all those movies with aliens and stuff right why would anyone put a map to earth Oh. There's something for you to think about. Right? Okay, so what are these little white dots everywhere? Okay, so this is part of what we call the Oort Cloud. O O R T. Named after the person who discovered this. Okay, the Oort Cloud is filled with icy bodies. Oh, yeah, Not like icy bodies, huh? Icy bodies like comets. Okay, this is where comets that pass by Earth come from. They come from this Oort Cloud. Right? 
Saturn, Saturn, and uh, some star clusters as well. Okay, so once we land back onto Earth,